Okay, so you have objects on your page or a group of objects, and now you want to make sure that they all play together nicely. So that involves aligning and distributing or spacing them evenly or just positioning them on the page where they want to be. So that's what we're going to explore next. Well, first of all, let's explore some options with moving objects around. And when I take this object right here, you can see that there are these green lines that show up. Those are called smart guides. And it makes it really easy to place something in alignment with other objects on the artboard or just in the document in general. And it's helping me line things up visually. And that's actually because we have smart guides turned on. I really like that feature a lot. And you can use that to help you create targets options. You don't even really have to do all the alignment features, especially when you have things that are mostly um, symmetri symmetrical. You can start using these tools. And you can see how you can create that, that feature. I'm going to go ahead and revert that. Puts everything back to where it was. Now, we can also um, use features like the nudge command if we want to move something up a little bit. So I still have it selected. I'm going to use my up arrow key and my left arrow key or my right arrow or down, and you can nudge things around. It's a nice way to just get it right in place. If you add the shift, it's going to move it in larger steps. And without the shift, it just moves it in these baby steps. Now, these can be um, features that are be active through the control panel. And depending on what you have selected, you're going to have different options. And also, depending on the size of your monitor and the monitor resolution, you might see Instead of the word transform, you might see a whole bunch of tools for transforming. And there's actually a panel, a dedicated panel that we have. You click on window here and move down. It's alphabetized and open up transform. And it opens up a panel, transform, and actually some align and pathfinder tools too that we could take advantage of. And that is pretty much the same as if I click here on transform, I can see those same tools. So it's just a matter of preference of what you what you like to work with. But this gives me the opportunity of positioning something exactly where I want it to be, as well as sizing it exactly the way I want. Now, if I were to position something, and let's say I put this at 400 by 300, you can see that it's putting it right in the center here. And part of that is because of the reference point. The reference point is here in the center. If I change the reference point, then it's referring to that top left-hand corner of where it is within the X and Y axis on this artboard. And it's referring to the artboard itself, not necessarily the global artboard. Um, that has to do a little bit with your rulers and how your rulers are set. If your rulers are going to be set as um, global rulers where they can take they um, look at the whole artboard together or if they're going to be set as one ruler where they're just seeing one at a time. But anyway, you can move these options around. It's also really handy if you wanted to position something um, with a little math in there. You could do this um, plus and I could put in one inch. And even though this ruler is in points, the computer is going to essentially calculate that and it's going to put me in a document. So it's really handy how I can set that up and I could even do a divided by 2 or times 2 or something like that. So you can control where things are positioned. So either by just moving it around, using some of these options, and that could involve some snapping as well if you had features like snap to point, snap to grid, smart guards, smart, smart guides, or just uh, putting in your actual points yourselves. Now, if it comes to alignment, let me go ahead and revert that again. When it comes to alignment, what you may want to do, though, is actually take advantage of the alignment tools. And I'm going to go ahead and select these circles. Just use my Shift key to select these four circles. And alignment is going to be on the control panel. And depending on the resolution of your monitor, you might actually see all those tools built out. There's that align objects. And we also have, in our Windows menu, the option to open up the Align panel, which I already did here. And when I'm going to use this Align panel, whether you use the Transform Align, I think it's a good idea to use the Panel menu and choose Show Options. It gives you more features, like you can see here. And so now all these objects are selected, and I can uh, align them. And these are the horizontal alignments. You can see how it's aligned them horizontally, or I can align them vertically to the top, to the middle, 
And, it, and because they were aligned horizontally first and now vertically, now you're creating this target effect, which is really nice. I can also use some distribute options. Let me scroll over a little bit here. So I've got these buttons that are set up, and actually these um, text and the graphics are already grouped together. But I want to do some spacing with them. And so I want to position home at the top, and I want to position share, kind of where I would like the bottom button to be. And I'm going to select them all here, and I can first of all do some alignment. And when I'm doing the alignment, um, if I choose the horizontal align left, you can see it goes to the far left edge. Let me do an undo here, control Z. Instead, I could change my alignment to key object. And if I decide that this is going to be my key object right here, home, you, I just click on it once. You can see how it's a little bit um, brighter. And if when I choose my alignment, everything is going to be aligned relative to that key object. I'm going to go back here and change this to the selection. And this allows me now to use some of the distribute commands. And so it's a great way to do some spacing. These are all basically the same width and height, so I'm not too concerned about the top or the bottom or the middle. I'm just going to make sure I choose any of them. But these could be significant if you have objects that are different sizes or different um, widths or heights. But you can see how it evenly spaced items up. Now let's go back to this key object. Here's my key object. I'll click back on home. And instead of having them all evenly spaced, I want to set this up at a specific distance. I'm going to put in Let's try 150, and it's going to default to points because this document is using increments. But now, when I choose my space, I've got to make sure I choose the right one. Sometimes I get these mixed up. But you can see how it's actually spacing it by 150 points. Let's try something more like 10 points. And you can see how it puts it together with only 10 points different. And that's because we're using that key object as opposed to align to selection. And of course, you notice there was an option for align to artboard. That can be really handy if you wanted to line everything up. Now, if I choose these objects right here, they're not grouped. But if I go ahead and choose align to artboard and center them in place, I have this nice option here. And still using align to artboard, if we choose the align top, you can see because they're not grouped, it's actually moving them um, the individual objects together, even though they're all selected. But it's still allowing you to align them to the artboard versus a selection or a key object. One thing you should re realize, though, is that Illustrator does remember how you left it. So it's a good idea to get in the habit of resetting things or just checking this button. And again, sometimes you're going to see it up here. But checking that button so that you know if it's aligned relative to the selection or the artboard. But now you have ways to take your objects and place them either by aligning them, nudging them, moving them, positioning them, spacing them, or just distributing them, as it's called, on your artboard.